So Nigel, this morning I heard you talk about research priorities for WHO and I wondered whether you could expand a little bit more about that. So one of the things that WHO does is uh, help shape research agenda, okay. uh, a global research agenda for, for all areas. My own work is mainly around newborn and children. So um, we're, we're very interested in issues around survival, but also issues around transitioning societies. Um, so we look at issues that haven't changed, things like breastfeeding, and we're also then looking at issues around countries that are going through demographic transitions, things like um, early child development by uh, preventing obesity. I like that you've mentioned breastfeeding because that's so dear to, to my heart and uh, I have to, been doing uh, breastfeeding research for a number of years now and the one thing that's striking for me is the fact that uh, this hasn't really changed much, you know, the, the rates of uh, breastfeeding haven't changed much and um, just to give an example, uh, we've been working <coughs> in the slums in Nairobi and working with uh, women there where breastfeeding rates, you know, exclusive breastfeeding is shocking like 3%. But now we're trying to see if we can actually shift it up by working with uh, women when they're pregnant and try to give them advice and information so that they can be supported in uh, practicing exclusive breastfeeding for the children. Because I just think <coughs> that set up, it gives them, the children, a, a chance in life to you know, I think many countries have seen breastfeeding as only a survival issue. Mm -hmm. And, you know, paradoxically, we've seen changes in uh, child mortality, mm -hmm. even without changes in breastfeeding mm -hmm. practice. Mm -hmm. um, but I think, you know, when you look at the evidence, mm -hmm. uh, breastfeeding is also very important for things like child development, yeah. preventing obesity, mm -hmm. intellectual development, yeah. as, you know, allergies and so on. Mm -hmm. So I think there is an additional question in addition for countries like Kenya, where there is a, a change in a large part of the population, what is the relevance of breastfeeding yeah. in, in these transitioning societies? Yeah. And how do you achieve those changes, as you're mentioning? Yeah, absolutely. And <coughs> the, the fact of uh, the cognitive development for children and the interaction that the children are actually having with their mothers, I think that's something that perhaps in Africa we haven't particularly paid attention to. As you rightly say, we're focused on breastfeeding as sort of like a just nutrition yeah. for, for babies yeah. and to, to prevent without, them from dying. Without, yeah. You know, the, the way I see we within WHO, we put a lot of value on, the, on implementation research right. okay. and the implementation science. Okay. And looking at, you know, if you look at it, we often look at it in three different levels. What needs to happen at a uh, regulatory or a political and policy level, you know, workplace regulations and uh, the economics of investing in breastfeeding promotion. What needs to happen within a health system, mm -hmm. and then there's all the dynamics that you seem to be examining mm -hmm. what needs to happen within a community or for the individual mother. Yeah, absolutely. I do think that, uh, uh, as you pointed out this morning, that uh, the, uh, both the public health and uh, the research community, in, even the policy makers, they've uh, moved their eye from breastfeeding. And one of the things that uh, we're <coughs> wanting to do, and we'll be doing very shortly, is actually just to put the statistics out there just to look at uh, you know the prevalence of exclusive breastfeeding and look at uh, you know how it hasn't changed over time in a way of sort of like raising awareness of these issues and perhaps also you know encouraging you know more um, research into ways you can actually uh, encourage women to circumvent constraints that they face so that there is a better uh, breastfeeding for children. You know, I think you know, for the policy maker, uh, they will be happy to see breastfeeding rates increase. Mm. But they often ask the question, what sort of uh, financial investment is needed mm. to promote? Mm. And one thing that is sometimes missed is what are the health costs yeah. of not investing? Yeah. So, uh, I mean, there are analyses from different parts of the world yeah. where suboptimal breastfeeding rates mm. cost the health system a lot of mm. money. Mm. And very often that type of research mm. isn't uh, done. Mm. Uh, sometimes we focus on the individual interventions yeah, yeah. With actually, without actually looking at the policy or economics yeah, yeah. adequately. Yeah. You've given me some more ideas <laughs> of research that we should be doing. Yeah. So uh, thank you so much. And uh, I do see. hope that uh, well, I can uh, continue interacting with you. I'll send you the yeah, papers do, of do, the work that we've done. Thank you so much. Okay. okay. Bye. <laughs> okay.